Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, I have to apologize first for my very bad English, but I think it's as good as most of you. Huh? <laughs> um, uh, I have no slides to show you. The only one I want to show you is this one, because I'm going to tell you about what happened to my colleagues and what what still will happen if we do nothing, if we, we just stand waiting, uh, and if we don't realize that uh, we are all threatened, not only us, but our values, our, uh, uh, our model of society. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Zineb El Ghazoui. I was born in Morocco to a Moroccan father and French mother. I grew up in Morocco in a Muslim culture, um, and um, I started um, struggling for freedom in 2009. I had a lot of problems with the Moroccan regime because, you know, in Morocco, Islam is the religion of state. I had to leave Morocco after that, and anyway, long story short, I joined Charlie Hebdo in 2011, and uh, I started working with this team. Um, this very, uh, in a very jokey atmosphere, but defending very uh, uh, strong values and very simple values. You know, yesterday I was, uh, we were here for the rehearsal, and I was talking with uh, Ina Ceauchenko, who from Femen, she will speak later, and she was telling me something. She was telling me, Zineb, do you realize that in that place, in that very beautiful place, 2,000 years ago, people were speaking about most interesting things than we will speak about tonight. Because tonight we will, actually I want just to deliver a message which is very basic. Uh, it is, you know, I my message is uh, that people who make funny cartoons like this one, or who write jokes about power, about religion, about money, about politics, about you, about me, they mustn't be killed. Uh, the <laughs> Last January, I wasn't there when the Kwashi brothers came and executed eight of my colleagues and four other people in uh, Charlie Hebdo. Um, I joined France the day after, and um, today, just like some of the survivors, I live under police protection. Uh, I have a very uh, heavy protocol of protection. Uh, it means that when I go buy bread, I have bodyguards with me. When I am in a cafe and I go to the ladies, when I, when I leave it, I, I find one of my bodyguards standing next to the door. Uh, when I go to the supermarket, I have bodyguards with me. When I go reporting, I have bodyguards with me. Um, and I live in the heart of Paris. I, I live in, the, in, this, in, in this beautiful city of Paris, where normally people like me shouldn't be protected. You know, bodyguards normally work with very important people, with politicals, with officials, with uh, political people, not with simple journalists like me who write or draw. Uh, but you know, um, I, um, I'm asking myself why very often people who have fatwas on their head, like I have, you know, I have to tell you first about those fatwas. The threat started the 18th of January when we issued this, uh, what the media called the survivor's issue. Uh, Luz, my colleague, made this beautiful drawing when you have someone who is supposed to be the Prophet Muhammad crying and delivering a message of forgiveness and saying, Je suis Charlie, of course, because it has to be funny. Um, uh, some people, uh, people from ISIS state, the fundamentalists, found that was a provocation. And you know, their friends were just killing my colleagues one week before. And but they found this is a provocation. Okay, so we started receiving threats. Um, we received a letter from uh, ISIS state 
telling me you escaped by miracle the, our glorious attack in Paris where your brothers in atheism, the journalists of Charlie Hebdo have been killed. But uh, believe us, we will not close our eyes before we, we separate your head from your body. Um, in the same moment, a video on YouTube was published uh, by a group calling itself uh, the Anonymous Islamic Youth, um, promising to me that I am uh, condemned to death soon. They didn't say when, but it is soon, okay? And a few weeks later, there were two hashtags on Twitter uh, in Arabic. The first hashtag saying, the, the duty to kill Zineb al Razwi to avenge the Prophet, and the second one saying, locate Zineb al Razwi to kill her. So there were serious attempts, attempts to try to locate me in Paris. Um, they also gave the whole religious justification why it became an obligation for every, every single Muslim to kill me. They gave the several methods how to execute me. So if you don't have a bullet, or a bomb, just isolate me somewhere, break my head with big stones, cut my head or burn me, or at least burn my house. Okay? Uh, so, I am wondering why, why, uh, why uh, am I threatened? And also why, uh, very often, people who have contracts on their heads are usually very often issued from the Muslim culture. That was the case for Salman Rushdie. He was born in a Muslim uh, family. Taslima Nasreen, Kamel Daoud, the Algerian writer. Nawal Sadawi, the Egyptian feminist and writer. Raif Badawi, who is still jailed now in Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, Sheikh Waldun Khaytir, the Mauritanian blogger, who is condemned to death. Uh, all those people, have a contract on their head or are condemned to death because they criticized religion. So I will tell you why, uh, why my answer, I think why. Because I think people like us are the living contradiction to this smoke screen that the fundamentalists want to put in our heads. You know, if to have the same speech as I have about Islam. I grew up in this religion. I studied it 16 years in the Moroccan schools. I speak Arabic. I was teaching Arabic in Egypt. So I know what I criticize. But if you, as Greek people, if Westerners, European people, say the same as me, they tell them, oh, you are an Islamophobe. It means you are a racist, so sh shut your mouth. But when people like us have this speech, they cannot say we are racist. Okay, they say they may say we are the home, uh, uh, home Arab or self-hating Arab. I don't know, but it's not very serious. Okay, uh, so those people, uh, the fundamentalists in the countries where Islam is the religion of state where they have the power. In those countries, if you criticize their religion, they just put you in jail or kill you. But in Europe, they have no legal tool to shut your mouth. So they accuse you of being Islamophobe, then racist. So let's study this notion, this concept of Islamophobia. Why the hell, when a Christian criticizes his religion, we say he is an anti-clerical. We don't say he is a Christianophobe, okay? But when a Muslim criticizes his religion, he is an Islamophobe. This is a question. Second question, why, why are, we, are, we meant, are we supposed to consider Muslims as a race? And why do we consider that the Muslims are condemned to be ruled by their own tradition? Aren't they capable of sharing the same values, the, sh the same universal values as us? Uh, why, why, why accusing those who criticize Islam of being racist? They are just people who say, okay, we are for equality between men and women, and we consider that the whole people, the whole human being should apply this equality. 
Why exclude the Muslims from this equality? Why exclude them from the universal values? Isn't that exactly racism? Isn't racism to say we as Westerners want certain values for our society, but you know those people, we will understand that they do it differently because you know, we don't want to be racist. This is exactly racism for me. And you know, this Islamophobia actually it is a, a, an intellectual imposture in, which, which was invented, which, which was created the first time by the Iranian mullahs to shut our mouths. But actually, it doesn't really work because, you know, this word entered this year the, the French dictionary, La Rousse. It is described as Islamophobia means hostility towards Islam and the Muslims. So here, there is a confusion between criticizing ideas and criticizing people. And these are two things that are very different. And the Council of Europe also adopted recently this definition of Islamophobia as expressing any hostile or negative ideas toward Islam or Muslims, and this is considered to be racist. So, if we consider that in countries like France, for instance, racism is not an opinion. Racism is forbidden by the law in France. So, if we consider that Islamophobia, which is the fact to criticize Islam, is racism, you are obliged by the law to have a positive opinion on Islam. Isn't that fascist? Okay, let us consider a second notion, a second S smoke screen that the fundamentalists want to put in our on our um, minds to stop us from criticizing their fundamentalism. You know, in the United States, for instance, I have been there, there recently. They have such a uh, they have a new concept called the safe space. What does the safe space mean? The safe space means that you come to my conference. Okay, you pay to, to come to my conference, no one obliged you, but you don't agree with me, so you want me to shut my mouth because you don't agree with it. The safe space is the right not to be offended. Okay, so if you don't want to be offended, either you don't come, you turn off your television, you don't buy Charlie Hebdo, or you just uh, pass your, your way. But if you come, listen to me and I'm able to listen to you too. And actually this right to not be offended doesn't exist. The only right that exists is the right to free speech. Freedom of speech is a right that exists. <clears throat> so what I want to say to all of you, don't, um, we must be very aware of the techniques, the very, very, um, uh, the very complicated techniques used by, used by the fundamentalists to change the notions, to, um, to put a poison, you know, in certain values that were very simple, that are very clear, such as democracy, such as secularism, such as freedom of speech, such as racism. Racism exists in Europe, but racism is not the fact to criticize a religion. It's not the fact to criticize an idea. Racism is the fact to deprive someone from his rights or the fact, the fact to apply general cliches to people who are supposed to belong to a community, either a religion or a race or a color or, okay, this is racism. Racism is not, the, is not criticizing Islam or any other idea because Islam is an idea and Islam is a power. Islam is a, a political power in the countries where Islam is the religion of state, okay? Your, the whole, your, your, your life is ruled by Islam. For instance, you know, I was born in Morocco. I am considered by the law as a Muslim while well, I am atheist, actually. But I am obliged to be considered as a Muslim by the law. I, I am condemned to be ruled by Islam. I am 
condemned to marry a Muslim man, even if I love a non-Muslim man, I, I can't marry him, it's forbidden by the law. I only inherit half of what a man inherits, either if, even if I pay my coffee the same price. So why don't, why, why the hell don't I have the right to criticize this power? Isn't that racism? Isn't that racism to say you were born in a culture so you cannot reach the universal values? So we all have to be aware of that and we all have now to understand that in this world, here in Europe, many events like this one were cancelled for security reasons. That there is people who speak, who are threatened, who their lives destroyed by those threats who are who have their lives destroyed by this monster without face who can be everywhere okay and who wants us to uh, stop talking stop uh, defending the values that are our values our universal values of freedom so i think that we must be aware that Today, I am threatened as a person, but no matter my person, no matter the people, the, it is a question of values. And the more we are, the cheaper will be the price. In Charlie Hebdo, we paid a very, very expensive price for uh, our freedom of speech because we were isolated. Many people, even in France, didn't understand what we were talking about. Many people said, okay, um, it's not important to make those jokes. Uh, we can abandon those jokes and just not offend the others. But actually, it's not a question of offending the others. It's a question of civilization. And the right to blasphemy is exactly the boundary between barbarianism, I don't know if the word exists, and civilization, and this is why we did it. Thank you.